Do you feel like an imposter? I certainly do. Do you feel like a fraud? Do you ever feel like your luck has guided you instead of your hard work? Do you ever have that feeling when you're doing something and you feel totally not cool doing it, but you've been doing it for 20 years? Do you ever doubt your capabilities? On today's episode, we're gonna break down five ways to not feel like an imposter. Not feel like an imposter? Jack, what do you mean? When I began my self-improvement journey, I had no clue what I was doing. I used to be some hotshot college DJ, and now I'm a holistic health and wellness coach who blogs on the internet and who has a bookshelf that's barely been touched. I felt like I had no credibility whatsoever. Turns out it's a common experience. Almost every person venturing into their own development feels these insecurities. In a strange twist, this self-doubt can propel us forward in life. So here's some reassuring news. I've never encountered someone who doesn't have imposter syndrome. If you're starting something new, you're definitely going to feel like an imposter. You know what you should do? Embrace it. Trying something new is growth. You do not have to hold on to this. You can free yourself now. Growth equals struggle, and it's okay for struggle at the start of growth. Whether you're starting a new hobby, becoming a parent, you're obese and you want to get into health and fitness, I'm going to show you five ways on how you can cut out the imposter syndrome from your life and truly start growing. Let's dive in. Number one, fear of failure. It's natural to feel fear when we're stepping into uncharted territories. We're all human. Uncharted territory used to mean saber-toothed tiger. And guess what? We weren't best friends with the guy. Shout out to our ancestors badass. Understand that mistakes are part of the learning process. And the more mistakes you can make, the more you grow. If you fail, you grow. And I promise you, it's way better than where you are now. Here are five ways to overcome a failure. We just talked about it. Number one, shift your perspective. Acknowledge that mistakes and failure is part of the growing process and treat them almost like they're beneficial. See the failure as growth rather than a step back. For example, me. Instead of having to stop the show, I got right back up and I saw that failure as benefits. Set realistic goals. Why does everyone talk about going to the moon when we can't even get out of the house at first? Break those goals down. Smaller, manageable steps. Celebrate your achievements along the way. Those mini goals, give yourself a pat on the back. Buy yourself a treadmill and a nice red light to go along with it. How about some positive self-talk? Hey, I love you. You're doing great in this world. Give yourself more of that. What's with all the negativity these days? You need to remind yourself that everyone faces challenges. It's okay. I just had to look at the script because I didn't know what I was saying. But guess what? That's okay. Tip number four, get a role model. Research and learn about people who motivate you. Maybe it's your cool uncle or maybe it's your school teacher that gave you an A. Understand that setbacks are a common part of success stories in that every successful person in today's world had a bunch of setbacks, failures, embarrassments. They got through it all. And the reason they're so successful is because they went through it. Unless you're an aristocrat in today's world, it takes failures to make it, man. Number two on ways to stop feeling like an imposter. Stop comparing yourself to others. Identify your strengths. List out every single strength you know you have and reflect on it. Recognize we all have our own strengths and unique capabilities. Use those to your advantage. Promise you are special. Limit social media. It's time to take back what is ours. Detox from the BS in your world and I guarantee you, you can stop comparing yourselves to others. I get it. Seeing all the people on social media be successful can be real fun for some time, but then you just start feeling bad about yourself. Go down the rabbit hole and it's never a good thing. So guess what? If you're feeling like that, see those accounts that you follow that make you feel like that? Take them out. Throw them away. Say goodbye. It wasn't meant to be, and it was never meant to begin. Gratitude practice. Every morning, five things you're grateful for. Just five. Watch your days go up. See, when you feel great for something, your subconscious gets triggered. And when your subconscious gets triggered to feel amazing things, life seems to be amazing. Why is that? Our subconscious controls our emotions, our thoughts, our actions. Actions. How we live our days is how we live our lives. So if our subconscious is primed for positive and grateful 
thinking that's soon going to lead in grateful and positive emotions than actions. Next thing you know, we're achieving our wildest dreams. Visualize success and visualize your own success not the success of other people. Visualize what it means to be successful for you. For me, I wanna own a farm when I'm older and a nice ranch, maybe some animals. I also wanna be successful doing whatever this is. Number three on how to stop feeling like an imposter, stop overthinking. Here are five tips to stop overthinking, guys. Number one, mindfulness exercises. It's time to get out of our heads and into our luscious bodies. How do we begin? Number one, start with movement, kinetic motion. Energy is life. And when we have proper energy and we can feel ourselves move, we start getting out of our heads and into our bodies. Number two, practice mindfulness techniques like meditation and Tai Chi. Meditation practices, when you get into that zone, and you focus on your breath. You're truly getting out of this inner thinking and you're moving out to the present moment. So try this, sit down for one minute, starting one minute and just close your eyes. And I want you to scan through your body, starting from your head down to your toes. Feel what it's like to have arms, your legs, your shoulders, your eyeballs, feel the weight of them. And then deep down past that, start feeling your energy again. Number two, overthinking. It's probably because your list is so damn big. So guess what? Create a to-do list. Find the times that work best. And guess what? Cut out the BS. Prioritize what's important in your life. Tackle one task at a time so you don't feel overwhelmed. Multitasking? Out of there. The only exception to multitasking is when you're walking on a treadmill and you have a bunch of books you don't read behind you and you have a microphone and a backwards cap. Yeah. Number three, talk it out. Share these negative and overthinking thoughts with a friend or mentor. They'll give you some advice, hopefully. And guess what? By talking through things, you start to understand problems better and you can get different perceptions on what's good and what's bad. It also can provide clarity. Number four, take breaks. Step away from work when you feel your thoughts getting overwhelmed. I know we all can't just leave our desk job, but taking a five minute break off the devices sure helps, guys. You can take a five minute walk, stare out your window, do whatever, close your eyes, just relax. Five, challenge those negative thoughts. If you have negative thoughts, say, why, why am I feeling like that? Are they true? Are they real? Most times they're not, guys. Let's go. Fourth way to stop feeling like an imposter is start to balance perfectionism. Here are five ways to stop trying to be perfect. Set realistic standards. Check out your goals and see what's improved throughout your life. One going to two is double. Number two, embrace imperfection. Accept that nobody is perfect, including yourself. Start loving yourself, man, and go on with it. See your imperfection as opportunities for growth. So if you really got five pounds to lose, that should be motivating, not demoralizing. Also, if you wanna get into that job or that school, start seeing the road ahead as something you love. Have self-love, love yourself, tell yourself that. Promise you're gonna feel something you never felt in a long time. The last one I got for you, get feedback. Start getting feedback from your family, your friends, the people around you. See the ways you're going about your growth. See how you can do it better, man. The last one we got today, baby. In order to not be imposter syndrome, you gotta stop dealing with impatience and start being patient. How do we do that? One, set realistic timelines on those goals, guys. We're not gonna build the world in three days. God did it in seven. It takes time. Break down those long-term objectives into small milestones. I know I've said it often, but it truly makes a difference. Number two, back to celebrating those small wins, guys. Keep a list of those successes to boost your motivation. Three, keep a progress journal. Show the progress that's going on and make use of it. Tell yourself you're doing good. Comparison of others is honestly so overwhelming. From personal experience, when I was a DJ, I swear, I wanted to be this one DJ so bad. And then I found out he was an alcoholic who barely made money. Total BS. You have skills they don't. Embrace that within yourself. Time to look at positives in your life, no one else. Balancing imperfection. Striving for perfection is like an elephant trying to date a chihuahua. Chasing perfection is telling yourself that wherever you are in life is not good enough. And although that may be true, it's not a great place for growth. 
What leads to growth is recognizing what you don't know and where you are and start taking small steps based off that. Listen, if I truly wanted to be a health expert, I would have to go to medical school, take the MCAT, drink a lot of coffee at 2 a.m. and uh, doctor shenanigans. F that. I'm going to be the best version of myself. And hopefully by getting all this information and sharing it with you guys, you can too. Recognize that imperfections make you humble and they make you relatable. Lastly, impatience with progress. Every step counts in today's world. Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her seat during the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955 through 1956 catalyzed a year-long effort. That small act of resistance led to a U.S. Supreme Court ruling. They talked about segregation on bus, eliminated it, and that was a huge, huge growth in the civil rights movement. Keep on doing small steps. Next thing you know, you're right where you want to be. Just keep on going. So guys, that's it. That's how we take out imposter syndrome from lives, from our lives, and we start living what we were truly meant to be. It starts with with one, accepting the fear of failure, embracing that and going towards growth. Number two, it's our comparison of others. We're eliminating that and we're seeing what's amazing about us. Number three, we're done overthinking. We have mindful meditation. We got movement. We have journaling and we have ourselves that we love. Number four, we got balancing imperfectionism. And guess what? We're not trying to be perfectionistas and nistos. We're doing it the way we're supposed to. Number five, impatience of progress. We're focusing on the small steps and we're celebrating each of our victories. So guys, listen, I know what it's like to feel like an imposter. You're starting something new and you feel like you shouldn't be doing this because you're not credible or whatsoever. But I'm telling you, with these tips, I promise you're gonna get growth, you're gonna get over these negative thoughts, and you realize that when everyone started their own thing, they all felt like they had imposter syndrome. It's common, and guess what? You can overcome it. These small steps lead up to your wildest dreams, and next thing you know, you're there. So just keep on going every single day. You got this. Cool Health out.